Hello and welcome to uh, this match on the B stream. It's gonna be Freaky versus Asmodai this great, match. Great match. Yeah, we have SK Gaming versus London Conspiracy, and I'm sitting here with two SK Gaming members. We have Spo and Martin. Yeah, yeah. Hi hey, guys. welcome guys. No, no bias here. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no, no bias at all. It's not like I'm great friends with Freaky or anything either. No, but no. like I, 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 I'm, I'm good friends with Asma too. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we see a lot of Asmo boys in chat, uh, so uh, we got Asmo covered here as well. And also, it's the winner's bracket, right? So yeah. whoever wins here is just going to crush the next one, and like they're both through. Easy game yeah. is alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, so I think they're going to start soon. Excuse me? If, okay, yeah. Asmo just wanted to make sure that he couldn't hear us, because yes. that'd be pretty bad, because yeah, we're going to be talk a lot about the match. Uh, we have the picks and bounce here. We have... Um, so Fre Freaky has Freaky is playing Dread, Rogue, Warlock, and Paladin. Yeah. And Asmo choose to ban the Warlock. And we have Asmodai playing Mage, Warrior, Druid, and Paladin. And Freaky choose to ban the Mage. Yeah, d very interesting decks, very interesting bans. A lot of the popular... Like, we've seen these classes a lot. Maybe not as much Warlock as... Uh, no. like, uh, like that that Freaky has in his lineup. And Asmo chose to ban it. What do you f How do you guys feel about that? I mean, it's Warlock, right? Yeah. Maybe he's not like set. Maybe he didn't build his lineup just to have a good edge against yeah. Warlock at all. Uh, but the most we've seen is Warrior Druid Paladin, right? Yeah, and exactly. Ma and Mage as well. So. Almost every, every lineup has had at least Warrior Druid Paladin. So we're in the game. We're moving into the game. And we have Asmodai on oh Warrior mind. against Freaky's Rogue. Yeah. Uh, what do you? How do you guys feel about this matchup? It seems to be a patron warrior uh, from Asmodai. I mean. A control warrior is really favored against the uh, uh, rogue, of course, but this matchup is a bit more like 50 50, I'd say. Yeah, it all depends on if the rogue can actually deal with the board, if he has the cards he needs, and. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember as a patron player myself, uh, pre uh, Warsong nerf, I, I really, really liked patron in this matchup because you could just like uh, finish them off with two bursts of Warsong yeah. commander patron. You had the time. Stuff, but. Uh, so you like could make their blade flurries kind of dead because blade flurry on a board of patrons was devastating. But these days, like even though patron has a lot more threats than they had uh, prior to the warsong nerf, uh, they still like they can't do the burst damage anymore, and flurry becomes like a very very that effective card against them. That's true, but the new patron I've seen runs like the other minions, like Boom, which is really yeah. annoying for a rogue. And then we have the Gromash for finish, yeah. right? So yeah, the Gromash is yeah. also like incredibly good. Uh, in the early in the early builds of Patron, uh, when the deck first became popular, like every Patron list r uh, ran Gromash and That's that true, card. Yeah. And this was like one of the matches we really, really so wanted Gromash. This turn is, we could just go backstab agent uh, here, but I, c I can see the Edwin coming out here. And yeah, it's something like Coin Deadly Backstab Edwin. Yes. Yeah. That How do you think that? Like, if you play the uh, agent, you save the coin, I guess. Uh, but you don't really like his war axe will contest your agent, yeah. and he gets the initiative. So it's gonna be an interesting turn. Um, I, I actually like uh, the Edwin play here because uh, there, there's only two executes removal in Patron Two, right? Yes. So, and it's never a card you would keep against the uh, against the rogue. No, so no, just going for an early Edwin is like the the most efficient it can be. Yeah, we can yeah, see exactly. that Asmund doesn't have an execute, so he's gonna have a really hard time dealing with this Edwin right here. And hey, he doesn't find anything. No, this is this is gonna hurt. Yeah, the, this is this this could be a quick one if uh, Asmodai doesn't pick up a uh, execute in like his next draw. I think this is probably I mean, just over. Probably next turn he will be able to deal with it if he punches it this turn. But that is gonna be 24 y damage dealt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex exactly. Starting the game at six life. <laughs> You can't it's afford that. Not there's, there's really no where you want to be. But so how do we approach this? I mean, the obvious play is just playing a ghoul, but what do we do with war weapon? Do we just not do anything? I we're we're going to be in the same situation or a worse situation next turn. I, I don't I don't think we can afford just taking 8 for like the plan being to hit it next turn. I think it's I think we win the game a larger percent of the time if we just like try to find execute. Hmm. Yeah, he really needs to find it next turn, otherwise it's looking really heavily favored for Freaky. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or finding like Battle Rage or something just to be able to cycle. Yeah. But we see another patron draw and this... Uh, mm. Now the ghoul comes out, it's gonna die. It's just gonna die to the 3-1 yeah, dagger that's up. 
And Freaky will be able to develop more minions. Or, yeah. well, just an Asher Drake, actually. Now, good pickup for him. It's not like uh, the patron list run Brawl or anything, or, well... Not that uh, we know about. Uh, exactly, not that we know about. And uh, certainly not something that Freak will play around. So, he can just develop his board and start hitting face. Now, even if he finds an Executor, still like that Violet Teacher and a Drake on yeah. board that needs to deal with, and I think this is just over. Yeah, the yeah. board is way too strong right now, and he can't deal with it all. And as you said, even if he would deal with one minion, it's... He's still gonna have to deal with two pretty strong minions, which... It's it's 15 damage shown yeah. uh, on board. Yep. And for a rogue not to have one damage in hand is... And we yeah. can see that he has a bunch of damage in hand. Yes. Yeah, there's, a, there's a Tinker Oil there. Even yeah. if there's an armor up, he can't deal with the board at all, mm. at all without taking damage. So it's gonna be game one goes to Freaky. Jesus, that was a quick one. Yeah, yeah. it really was. Who knew? I don't want Cleave. Powerful yeah. card. And this is interesting. You now we have Druid and uh, Druid and Rogue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Himself uh, against the lineup. And I think this, mm. like the set of decks they have, it's really important the first game, right? Yeah. There's a lot of matchup that is like you kind of want to have the Druid, I mean the Paladin mm. against the Druid yourself, but we'll, yep. we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I, f to me it looks like Asmodai has to pick his Druid here into uh, Freaky's Rogue, yeah. because Paladin, like, I know that Freaky brought Rogue just so he can counter the Paladins. Uh, and as I we can I see... I don't think Rogue is a legit counter to the Secret Paladin, but that's uh, just my fault. Not necessarily, yeah, I, no, but, but... I agree with you. I was trying to make the same point to Firebat during testing, but... Yeah. Uh, because just... It's... Uh, like, your deck is really good against everything but Mr. Challenger. Yeah, so this matchup is really interesting. Myself, I think the Rogue is favored, but you need, like, we see he has one, uh, like, prep, but you really need something like the Eviscerate, the Sap, the really big tempo cards that makes you a swing turn on turn four or something to really put the Druid on the back foot. Yeah. I kind of like this hand though. He does have the coin, so right now he can just play the Donessus Aspirant, and if it doesn't work out, he has the coin to coin out a Shredder next turn. Yeah, yeah it looks so really good. Looking pretty good for us. And, and picked up another 4 drop in Keeper to Grow. Not the most efficient card in this matchup, it's just like good. No, but we saw uh, the Edwin doing really work in yeah. the last game, so yeah. Keeper will do work this game probably. Freak is and also like really good. Yeah, all, all you want in this matchup is really threats and some kind of tempo spells, so the second you pick up something to do with this preparation, like yeah. the Phantom Knights, uh, Tinker Oil or whatever. Freaky literally has like everything he wants in the matchup. Yeah, even a Sap or Eviscerate is yeah. really good with that preparation. So uh, this is pretty good for Asma though. He picked yep. up the Shade, so he could actually deal with the 3-3 on board and play a Shade if he wants to I keep the Aspirant yeah. alive. Uh, yeah, but at the same time it's pretty risky. I I really like the the Wrath Coin Shade play, yeah. uh, because if he does that, even if the Doranassus would die, uh, he has a pilot to trader, and if it doesn't, he can just follow it up with low flip the following turn. Yeah, true. Really yeah, like it. There's a lot of options to consider here. I think. I don't think coining the low flip now makes any sense at all. But no, you want to use it for more, more temple later, right? Yes, exactly. So it looks like he's going for the wrath play here. Yes, develops a nice board, keeps the pressure up by developing the shade. And an early shade is also pretty nice because you can't really play it uh, in a safe spot later on because of Blade Fury. So at least now he has the chance of building the shade up every turn. Mm, and it's pretty quick turn by Freak. He just drops down the shade, uh, the shredder. Yeah. And picks up the sap. That could be useful later. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a very good draw to go with the prep to b build build more tempo. But mm. as for this turn. I would have been very surprised to see Asmodai not, not just play his low fib. Mm, yeah, uh, I kind of like the low fib here. And then uh, Freaky doesn't really have a good play to, like, you know, contest the board. But mm. If we play the low fib, do we just smork with everything? I I want to still keep my shade hidden. I'm not. Yeah, the shade is not going to be under any threat if you play a low fib, so you can build it up one more turn. Just to silence oh. and trade instead. Very interesting line. This is, this is a really passive, I feel. Yeah. But we'll see here. He really wants to keep that Aspirant alive. Mm -hmm. You see Freaky go for Violet Teacher instead of uh, Asher Drake. Probably to play around something like Swipe, but that still kills the Violet Teacher, although he has to invest six mana into it. Mm, yeah. I mean, I Swipe, you would be able to use your hero power as well because of the six mana, so... 
I, I just want to see him play Drake so he can set up for uh, Edwin, especially now when you see a uh, Keeper gone already. Yes. Also, the Drake could throw something like a backstab or something just to deal with their Darnassus itself. He's planning on sapping something. Wait, he's he not really sapping, sapping the, the Darnassus? Oh, wow. looks like he is. I mean, if you're sapping and you have the Edwin in hand, I guess you don't want to sap the uh, Keeper, but I, mm -hmm. I'd i rather just play the yeah. Asher Drake there. I, I'd, I'd rather just, yeah, ju just play the Drake and not sap anything. Yeah. I don't really know. I I want to ask Freak about that later, why he, mm. why he used it there, because that looks pretty weird to me, especially looking how he's like weak to swipe this way. Yeah, also, like, I think... This is a perfect turn for Lofa, Lofa as well. You, like, the free pie won't really do anything more. There's no more tokens since you don't have swipe. You don't want to risk, like, mm -hmm. like playing Shredder into Darnassus, killing it off a 1-1. One -one, you're really weak to something like just Deadly Poison Blade Flurry. Yeah. Looks like he's feeling really threatened by this Violet teacher and wants to deal with it right away. But as you said, like a Lothar would have done the trick as well. Uh, Asmus yeah. just played in a way that's like very... He's playing really uh, He really, really try just tries to deal with all of Freakus' threats. It's a very interesting way to approach the matchup, I think. Yeah. Uh, not... Hmm. not a w like, usually I just try to like fight for board, but I try to maintain some board myself. So if I can set up like something like a low fib to to contest most of my opponent's board, I'd rather do that than like clear and not really develop anything. Yes, I agree. I, I we see Asma picking up the swipe here, so we could see like a swipe there Nessus. Yeah, that looks but decent, but there might be a better play for him. It, it feels like uh, I don't like the last turn. No, the last turn kind of screwed up for him. Uh, I believe he would have had a low fib on the board now. But I mean, we're still fine. Like we're, we have yeah. more cards uh, than the rogue, and as long as we as we deal with the threats, we still have the low feb to like shut down big key turns, mm -hmm. and we still have a shredder. So I guess we're still fine. But we're still looking for this rogue, like the really, really big swing turn for a rogue, right? So I think we're gonna see an Edwin here. Yes, I'd be surprised if we don't. It's not the second thing because this is a lot of burst. Yeah. Yeah, now Asma has to deal with this Edwin. You know, it doesn't really do anything here. I he mean, loaf of Shredder. He, Asma kind of, with only these two threats, he does have the Wild Growth to cycle in uh, two turns, but... I really like the loaf of uh, Shredder, though, because he has a Savage Roar in hand, and he can push out a lot of damage next turn. Yeah, I, I mean, it's... In my eyes, it's the only play. Just playing a loaf of wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Throwing down two minions with one of... One of them is really uh, tricky. Yeah, I was gonna mention this. What about Savage or Cleared Edwin? Okay, again, he's taking the defensive approach. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, you know what? This I is actually yeah, actually, sense. this one I like because mm. the the one way that Freaky now with only three cards now gets back is to sprint here, but uh, Lofa blocks sprint out of the game this yeah, turn. This is just a dead oh, well, turn for Freaky. Out of the like, he can't I play mean, sprint this turn. I mean, it would have been the same, but you're you're not removing the Edwin right, so. Should have a four three and a two two, right? Yeah, that's interesting. And now he's done some combo pieces, so Freaky doesn't really have to be fr uh, feel threatened by the combo in this spot. But Freaky just uh, is very threatened by by this board. Like uh, a low and a pilot is not easy to deal with. Sap deals with the uh, pilot trader, but it's just gonna come right back next turn. I mean, step back, step. We could even. You could sit up for a lot of damage next yeah. turn. Yeah. Yeah, but you're twelve. Yeah. Well we, I mean, we saw, we saw one savage roar and one force. Yeah. So we can't really be that scared right now of uh, the the combo. But yeah, free kid really needs to find a second Asher Drake or a sprint, uh, a sprint. or a blade flurry. Yeah, flurry would be good too. <laughs> This is a good draw for us. Yeah. Right? Ooh. Mm. Into the Emperor. E I kind of like to shred it though. Just yeah, because he has to have it for in hand. Yeah, and it's more sticky as well. Yeah. Okay. He goes for the Wild Griff. That's interesting. I guess he figures that the Innovate won't really be used that much since, I mean, he doesn't need it for the double combo since he doesn't have the two components. So it's probably just for playing two minions, I guess. But. Not sure what he was looking for there. 
blade crew would also be nice. Oh, oh, there it is. Hello. How much damage is that? So our weapon goes up to seven. That's fourteen plus six. That's twenty. Yeah, free of lethal. I think you just go for it. Yes. Yeah, I mean he has to blade through this turn, and it, then something like if, even if Asma hero powers still are sprint and eviscerate is lethal. Yes. And with like it sounds unlikely, he needs to stop the sprint and run eviscerate. But if he finds the sprint, he like draws such large portion of his deck that he's very likely to find one of his two eviscerates. Yes. See what drops out of the shredder at two free Gelbin. <laughs> and more, even more innervates. Yeah. It's actually. It's actually really bad for Asmodee. This is second Savage Roar, like, just most of his burst is gone. Yeah. Just one sprint here for Freaky, and that should lock down the game. Yeah. Is there anything else he can uh, draw to just This is interesting to turn. see if Asmodee chooses to go with Emperor into big game, or if he uses the hero power to... I mean, he hasn't seen a single Eviscerate, so if he no, doesn't hero power, he's dead to Eviscerate. No, because it was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's true. Oh yeah, y y yeah just to just to attack with raid, but then again, but the the, em the emperor big game hunter sets up lethal. He's yes. also dead to if he doesn't hear power, he's dead to deadly poison too. Okay, that's true. Yeah. But looks like he's going for uh, hero yeah. power. I don't no, know. I this way, you give Ricky like two turns to draw the sprint, but you limit the number of outs by quite a lot. No, yeah, but he's setting still up still for lethal. Oh, oh he, he played the big yeah. hunter. Okay, cool. I, I like this play. Just giving Ricky this one turn to draw oh, something. Ouch. And that's not gonna be enough. I oh. really like Asmus Lane here. Yeah, it was good. I mean... It was really passive playing, but maybe it in, the, in the end it turned out to be the correct play, I guess. And Asmus is letting out a sigh uh, of relief. In the yes. end, it didn't even matter. It's interesting right. here. But now we're gonna see... <laughs> I'm gonna be really surprised if we don't see the Paladin come out here from Freaky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's somewhat of a pretty good counter to Druid. I, I, I'm not somewhat of a good somewhat, counter yeah, to Druid. Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> really? It's a Paladin. Come on. Dude, somewhat. who am I? None who of your am I? <laughs> yeah. I'd much rather play Paladin against Druid than just a Druid Mirror, that's for sure. Mm, yeah. Yes, exactly. It's actually, like, it depends what kind of Druid Freaky has. If Freaky has the aggressive Druid, like, I, I would much rather pick Druid, I think, because that's, like, have an even better matchup, but no. if w wouldn't you still just pick the paladin? I, I I don't think so. I think that the aggressive druid is favored enough. Well, he did pick the paladin, and we're moving into game three. Yeah, I mean, Easy. I, we all play this with freaky. We know he's not bringing <laughs> the aggressive druid. So oh shit! How could you how could you say this on stream? <sighs> People will know. Spoiler alert! Spoiler I think alert. it's Please already probably been streamed. <laughs> okay, so it's the third game of freaky versus Asmodai. We We're at the 1-1 really one one right now. Yeah. <laughs> really, a really good hand here. Oh, yeah. yeah I like him leading with the Knife Juggler. Me too. It's like, if you're going to have your powerful Wild Griff play... Come like at me, bro. Yeah, you're just going to get punished. Yeah. Also, we get oh, an extra wow. Follow up with the Cog Hammer. That's also really good. Yeah. This is looking really, really good for the Paladin already. Uh, a Keeper to grow there could be really good for Asmodai, but yes. he just doesn't have it. I mean, do we swipe here? It's. I think we have to. Well, you have turn three coming up. Yeah, but that's going to be the muster. But, but that's yeah. going to be a lot of what daggers. Gonna so do? Like but it, but if, yeah. if you don't swipe this turn, like you just remove the divine shield from the sh yeah. bot, and then if it does anything but muster battle, we're just kind of dead. No, yeah, I, I think we have to swipe here because Astro Drake next turn. He has two Astro Drakes in hand, and next turn would have been a dead turn with the swipe. Then he yeah. wouldn't really done a lot. He would have taken too much damage, or yeah, because mm. that's just three damage from knives. And then 5 damage on board. Plus the weapon, that's a lot of damage. Is there any merit to playing the big game hunter uh, to uh, bait out the master battle? But I mean, if you... Uh, no. Nah, okay, that's, that's what I wanted that. to hear. Then you're, then you're in the uh, same position, like a worse position next turn, because you've used your big, big game hunter as well. Yeah. Also, big game hunter is a pretty valuable card in this matchup, because yes. if you have a clear board and a plimster or challenger, big game hunter is a very efficient way to deal with the challenger. Yeah. So we see the master come down and another swipe? No. Oh, no such luck. I think we just turned up. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty decent yeah. draw. <laughs> Tyrion picked up too. That means that Freaky doesn't necessarily have to go for like to win early game, but he can also just stall this out to turn eight and Tyrion is very, very powerful against Druid. So what do you guys think of attacking two one ones in Coghammer? See where it hits, or do we just develop? 
a secret than another mini boss. Kind of well, like dealing with it now. Yeah, what? A, yeah, I, I like the cog hammer redemption. Yeah, like sure, you will probably just get back a one one from the redemption, most likely. But oh, it's gonna push in the two two first. Mm. Hmm. I don't know about that. I mean, I, what are we looking to do with this play? I don't. Oh, he's he's gonna trade in his board. That's very interesting. Oh. Go for the meet about. Uh, yeah, this is. I sure you, you're saying the cog hammer this way, so you can probably deal with this next threat pretty efficiently by removing the divine shield and setting it right back up. But you knew that Asma had a trouble dealing with that board. Yeah, just the tokens. Itself you're you're sacrificing all of it into a druid of the claw. Oh, this innovate is actually pretty good. He could play a shade if he wants to, mm -hmm. but yeah. from our perspective, it's not really good. Consecration is really bad yeah. for you if you innovate this shade. Then again, you don't really have much else in hand, so you might as well do it. No, wh what are you saving it for? Like you're yeah. already at seven mana next turn, so you're gonna be able to play all your minions anyways. But he is gonna get punished. <laughs> Do you actually uh, trade the 1-1 one, one and hit with face here and play a redemption to, uh, together with it? I don't think it's going to matter next turn, but no, the I Divine Shield is just so strong. You're probably not... Like, the Druid is going into turn 7, so if he uses his hero power, he's only playing up a 5-drop anyways. Mm -hmm. And it's more likely he wants to play a 7-drop, I think, since he's played two 5-drops. That, does that make any sense? <laughs> mm, I guess it does. Personally, I like the... Just Playing the competitive spirit down, just hitting with the shield mean about playing competitive yeah. spirit. Okay, I like it, that. It, yeah, because if Asuda uses the hero power to deal with the 1 1, you, you, sure, you, you just get a free free, mm -hmm. but then again, that's something to cog hammer up and set up redemption for. Yeah, and you don't know if it's something like maybe Avenge or something. That yeah, I, 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 exactly. Yeah, Asuda gets very, very punished if it would be Avenge if you use yes. the hero power. So I think we're going to see uh, Thornassus plus Drake. And then he just gets punished by the competitive spirit and the cog hammer. If that's his plan, it should probably be... Uh, maybe he knows all the secrets from previous least. I was thinking about repentance. But mm. yeah. I think you should have played the aspirin first there as well, just in case of the, the repentance, right? He, he may still want to hero power. like. Okay. And, and also, if you're drawing to Wrath this way... Uh, that is going to be good for Freaky with the cog hammer here. Yes. So we just attack him with it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this better. Coghammer first, remove the Divine Shield and take four to the face. Then go in with whatever. I did not get Coghammered, Hero Power and play your two secrets. Oh, wait, you want just one of the secrets. You just play the yeah. bench. Yes. Hmm. I like the redemption since the Minibot cut. Uh, yeah, but. It doesn't really... Uh, if, if I use the Divine Shield, which makes some sense because I saw a Keeper already. Yeah, I guess. Oh, interesting that he... I don't know. I'm willing to believe that this might have been the correct play, but he did it very quickly. He did not even consider that maybe I should play this Ancient of Lore. Hmm. I guess it dies on board, so it's not a very good play. Yeah, he wants some sticky minions now and uh, just a way to take back the board. Yeah. Shredder pickup is awesome here. That's we'll really good. We'll also be able to play uh, deal with the free free uh, two free without killing off our minions. So we still have the redemption avenge. Next turn is going to be brutal. We see the Tyrion. Mm -hmm. So how do we do this? By now we should know what secrets it is because there was no repentance, no uh, noble sacrifice, no noble and there was no. Second competitive spirit, so we know that the secrets are it actually. Could be eye for an eye. Oh yeah, it could <laughs> be eye for an eye. That would be I pretty funny. Probably not something <laughs> I would put freak on. <laughs> Why not, bro? Easy. I it definitely happened to me on ladder. I got eye for an eye. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> People testing, we, we, I suppose. We've all been there. Eventually. Oh, if that, that would have hit the, uh, the the shredder, you could have big game hunted it. Yeah, so that's a 50-50 that Asma lost. P pretty unlucky for him, but 50-50s are something that we Hoffman players are very used to. <laughs> yeah, either you win or you don't. But this is such a nasty board to deal with. Yeah. There's like no real, like a clean way of doing it, of dividing the damage. 
and you think you've dealt with some. It's like he, he only has one card left, and yeah, yeah. it always. Oh god, and it. also a mysterious Chandler to follow up. I'm, I'm pretty. This is a very easy just slam tier on a board. Yeah, it's so strong versus Druid, as you said. Uh, Keep yeah. going, phase. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. No. Oh. Keep Road to Grow is like the, the answer okay, to... Okay, silence uh, into attack and... Get to him save. Yeah, that works. Uh, Except that there's this Mr. Challenger follow-up. Yes, but... No, yeah, yeah right. exactly. Yeah, We have to go for the Doomsayer here. He went for the wrong Doomsayer. <coughs> so... Riki takes game three. So, we're going with... Now Asmo has to first win the Paladin Mirror against Freaky, because but if he, if he only he has Paladin left. But if he wins that, he's also favored to win against Druid. As we just yeah, saw, that is true, the yeah. Paladin exactly. does really, really good against the Druid. So even though Asmodai is down one game, it's still a very, very close series, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Freaky, Freaky kind of has to win this game, otherwise he's unfavored in the last game. It's kind of what we talked about. The matchups are so important, especially the first game, because if you get in the backhand here, uh, I will fight with honor. you have to win I some of the unfavorable matchups as well. Equality. That's a card we haven't seen much in Paladin. Me what do you neither. What do you guys think of it in Secret? Oh, oh well, <laughs> it's not okay. Secret. Yeah, it's a Control Paladin. I I spoke too soon. Yes, you Th did. This matchup, uh, I'm not a very experienced uh, mid range Paladin player. How How does this matchup usually go? I what do you think? I don't know. I don't know when the latest. I played mid range paladin was was probably ages ago. <laughs> well, I do play secret paladin a lot, but you don't really play a lot of control paladins. Uh, I, I so talked to. I'm not quite sure. I talked to a teammate, uh, my teammate, the uh, Amnesia, about this, and he uh, was playing mid range paladin just to beat up on secret paladins. So I'm pretty sure that Asmodee is very favored in this okay. matchup. Yeah. So maybe points. not very favored, but he's definitely favored. Hmm. I like this redemption. Yeah, it's a good one. Asmodai is gonna play the cog hammer, thinking that he punishes Freaky, but it doesn't really. It's actually the other way around that Freaky yes. will punish Asmodai with his cog hammer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's pretty funny actually. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <coughs> yeah. I'm not sure. So, let's say Asmo pulls this off, he wins. Then we have the mid range druid against the paladin. Yeah. And there I actually think the druid is favored. You think oh, so? You may be right. Yes, yeah, I do. I think so as well. Okay. There's just too many mid um, mid um, minions that you can't really yeah. deal with. Other piece gives like a great cardinal, but when uh, there are that many minions, bro. I mean, a uh, minion on board is still savage roar damage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. One attack. <laughs> yeah, and like it can't, can't only deal with like one peacekeeper can only deal with one threat, and there's so many good efficient threats in Druid these days. We saw a perfect pickup here for Asmo. Yeah. Picking up the Shredder on curve. Awesome. Shredder on 4, apparently a good thing. Yes, Who knew? I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, for freaking out, do you want to see him trade into the pilot Shredder or just go phase with for 4 damage? I think. Mm. It looks like he's going phase, but. Mm. I mean, he no. will be punished, but the. The weapon Asmo has, because yeah. he can just take it out himself. So I would like but to see him go in. But it will get punished either way, right? Pr the two drop plus the uh, cog hammer is very likely to be able to take out this shredder. Yeah, but that's or oh, just okay, a free two. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely not what Freak wanted. He didn't really want a two two or a two free come out oh, there. But or wow, or some good wow. shredder drops from both players, and I think Freak got certainly got a better end of it. Yes, I do think so. And this this can actually spiral all of control really quickly yes. because there's a knife juggler must for battle on uh, like for next turn for freaky and with no consecration in Asmodai's hand. Hmm. Oh, we decide to go for the heal bot to yeah, contest. Just the, uh, to contest. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like this. Yeah, well we can use the somber shower later, right? It's just like you can yeah. uh, squeeze it in on almost an, any given turn. So now we just attack and we unleash the dudes. Unleash the dudes. And let the daggers decide. I mean, it has to hit, right? Not necessarily. Oh, 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 it's oh, yeah. man. Am I jinxing Don't it? Don't jinx it. Oh, oh okay, there we go. Okay. He got it. I almost jinxed it. So close. You can see a Consecration will put uh, Asmodee back in the game. This, this could, could always this do can something. Always swing. Yeah, this can... Like another Murloc Knight here would be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets it! Oh, <laughs> 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 
Oh. Yeah, so I How guess much damage uh, do we have? Oh. We have 5, 8, 12. We have a lot of damage. I like damage. It's fun. Well, he knows that Asmo doesn't have a consecration in hand, so. And he can just trade And, and Healbot has already been used. Healbot has already been used. Mm -hmm. I like using the dudes here. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, we only have one, one attack yeah. weapon. I'm, I'm good at this game, apparently. <laughs> Not. So it's desperately needed. No cog hammer uh, anymore. No cog hammer. And it's consecration. That uh, I'll does reduce four power on the board, so. But do we really? Pick up. Like, what do we do against Tyrion? Well, we need to beat the board first before yeah. we can worry about beating yeah. what oh, might okay, be okay. in Freak's hand. Also, we have a Tyrion on our own next turn, and. Iron Beak Owl is not a card that Secret Paladin usually plays. Well, this Sludge is a really good pickup, yeah. especially before a Therian turn. Mm -hmm. And we also see the Owl in Freaky's hand. Exactly. Yeah, that's, wh that's what I was saying. Yeah, I think yeah. that Asimilai is relying really hard on this Tyrion. Yeah. And because who plays uh, Owl in Secret Paladin? Not a, a lot, lot of, of people. No, exactly. Oh god, that competitive spirit, usually one of the like worst draws in in the deck for Secret Paladin to just draw it naturally, but that's very good right now with seven minions on board even. This is Consecration or Bust, I feel. Yeah, yeah, ab ab absolutely. He is. We could stall with Lay on Hands, but it won't do anything. No, I don't even think it stalls. No, it doesn't no, stall it. No, because we're going to get seven, We're going to go to 10, 16 and then we 15. die. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't find it. That's game. Yeah. Hmm. Just one Consecration would have been enough there. Yeah. Yeah. Because Freaky is all out of steam. Yeah, but it's kind of how Secret Paladin does, right? Yeah. Let's see if he actually draws it here. No, no, no it's even an Argus, yeah. Too far away. So we'll have 10, 15, nine, we'll have 20 damage total. But no, 23 damage. And that will be game. Freaky. And match even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. match. So Freaky Games moves on. Yeah, he uh, moves on to tomorrow. But very tomorrow. convincingly too, he won both his matches 3-1. Very yes. impressive showing by Freaky. Mm -hmm. I know going in he was not like that comfortable in his lineup. He felt good about it, but he was like, yeah, he wasn't, you know, just glowing with confidence. Mm -hmm. But now he has to feel a lot better. I yeah. think both players played the series really well. Yeah, I didn't. They see really did. Yeah. yeah. Anything that I really like. What are you doing? It was mm -hmm. a really good match. Yeah. As when they should have run consecration. Yeah, that misplay, not drawing <laughs> consecration. That's a misplay. But Asmo still has a chance to yeah, uh, play in the yeah. loser's bracket. Exactly. So, which he has to win to also advance to yeah. tomorrow. He, so. plays a, he plays against the winner out of Kaldi and... Uh, oh, who is it? Nimsh. Nimsh, Nimsh. Yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So, bo both of those are good, good players, but uh, Asmo already beat Kaldi and... Uh, well, I don't know about Nimsh, but... Uh, I think that uh, Asma has a good chance to go through to tomorrow too. Yeah, I'd say in, in the loses match. Okay. So let's see who we have next on the uh, on the stream B. Yeah, um, I, I actually have no clue. Maybe we'll go to a quick break. And yeah, we'll uh, go to a quick yeah. break, but and we'll have them update the layout with what the next match is. Production. Pred mm. So Nimsh okay. versus Kali. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes, that makes a lot of sense see. actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, c okay. could probably figure that out on our own, but yeah. thanks, production. Okay, so, yeah, we'll go to a quick break. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.